Hello everybody, welcome to church. I feel like singing a song, okay? Um, uh, let me let me think of a song I can sing, you know. Um, it says, salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. Because you are alive and you live in me. Salvation is here. Now you might be wondering why I just sang that song. Because that song, aside from the fact that it's one of my favorite songs, is also in a way in line with our topic for today. But I'm not going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you after after we pray and we do some dancing with the Junior Church Praise Team. Okay? So before I say that prayer, I want you to do something for me right now. I want you to just call a crowd. <laughs> okay, wait, man. I don't mean you should go outside, but just call maybe your mom or your dad, maybe your brother or your sister, whoever it is that's with you, and let them know that it's time to start the service. All right, so let's put the hands together, close our eyes. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today. It's a day that you have made for us to rejoice and be glad. We give you all the praise for all all of the things you've done for us accept our thanks in jesus name as we begin the service we pray that your name will be glorified throughout the entire service thank you for hearing us for in jesus name we pray amen okay so like i said it's time to join the junior church praise team for a session of praise and worship then when we're done i'll then tell you what the topic for today will be so i'll see you then
welcome back from that awesome time we had praising the living god did you enjoy it i don't know about you but i enjoyed it so much because praising god is something that i like to do all the time okay so um i'll go straight to today's topic the, today's topic is actually about a person that person was a prophet okay and the name of that prophet is prophet elisha i'll say that one more time prophet elisha so we're going to be talking about prophet elisha now the first thing about prophet elisha the meaning of the name elisha is god is salvation i'll say that again the meaning of the name of elisha is god is salvation and that was why i sang that song from the start of the service yes yeah, so that's the name of elisha the meaning of his name god is salvation so who was elisha like i said elisha was a prophet now he wasn't just born on the day he was born he just became a prophet immediately no god had a plan for his life that he was going to become a prophet okay but before he eventually became a prophet he was working with another prophet named elijah now prophet elijah was a very powerful prophet because in those days we didn't have pastors like we have now so whenever god wanted to speak to his people he would speak through a prophet so god would tell the prophet something okay then the prophet will tell god's people so elijah was a powerful prophet i mean this guy he called fire from heaven and it consumed an offering that offering had been poured around water had been poured around that particular altar there was a there was an animal that was supposed to be for sacrifice you know there was water on that on that off on that altar and on the offering on the on the animal to be used for the offering or the sacrifice you know and they poured water on it that was not supposed to be if you want an offering to uh, become flammable you need to pour something that will make it flammable not obviously not water but elijah commanded fire from heaven and it consumed the sacrifice that was already let me call it filled with water so elijah was a very powerful prophet and elisha was working with elijah so he was helping elijah do the things that god had told him to do so elisha was always learning from elijah now something happened elijah was going to heaven all right now elijah had told elisha that he was going to go to heaven you know so what that meant was elisha was going to continue to do the things that elijah was was doing so let me read you that story just briefly of when elijah was going to heaven and elisha was with him it's from second kings chapter 2 I'm going to start from verse 1. I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but just a couple of it, then I'll tell the story. So from verse 1, it says, I'm reading the NLT version. It says, When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord had told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live i will never leave you so they went on together to jericho so elijah was going to be taken to heaven you know and elisha didn't want to let him go so let me move a little bit more um to verse 9 it says when they came to the other side 
Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. So Elisha wanted to take after Elijah. Then Elijah answered him. He said, You have asked a difficult thing. Elijah replied, If you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses on fire. It drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah, Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and charioters of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He stuck the water with Elisha's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided and Elisha went across. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance what had happened, they exclaimed, Elijah's spirit rest upon Elijah, and they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. So let me stop at verse 15 there. So Elijah was going to be taken to heaven and Elisha had been walking with him. In fact, they got to a river. Elisha brought out a piece of cloth from his, from his um, pocket. Okay. I don't know if those ropes had pockets then, but he, he bought it from somewhere. Anyway, a piece of cloth. And he struck the river in front of them and the river parted. Both of them walked on dry land, that's just similar to when, you know, Moses parted the Red Sea, you know. So they went across. Then Elijah was telling him he was going to be taken away from him, you know, and what would he want from him? Then Elijah said he wanted a double portion of his anointing. So Elijah said, well, it's a difficult thing, but if you see me go to heaven, then you will have what you have asked. And that was exactly what happened to Elisha because he saw the chariot of fire that came from heaven and carried Elijah to heaven. So the same anointing, the same power to work miracles was now upon Elisha. So that is why when he was going back and he got to the same river that they had passed, he had taken the cloth from Elijah and he struck the river and the river parted. So he walked through the river on dry land. So when the other prophets or all the other people saw him, they knew that the same power that had rested on Elijah had rested on Elisha. So Elisha had a double portion. So what Elijah could do, Elisha could do two times of it, double of it. You know, in, 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 in Nigeria here, we like singing the song, um, Everything now double, double. <laughs> so Elijah had double anointing. Now that anointing that Elijah had was not just for sitting around and doing nothing with it. It was to help people. And that was what Elijah did. The anointing that he had, the power to work miracles that he had, he used it to help people. Let me read a point to you here. It says, One of the miracles that Elisha did, he healed the waters of Jericho. Then he says here, he also prophesied a son for a wealthy Shunammite family who hosted him. And he later resurrected the same son. Another thing, he removed poison from a pot of steel. One other thing, he says, he multiplied 20 baby loaves to feed 100 men. Let me read another one. He helped cure Neiman's leprosy. Let me read another one. Elisha's dead body raised a dead corpse. So even after Elisha had died, a dead corpse touched his body and that person came back to life. So who had died, came back to life. You see, so the anointing, the power that Elisha got from 
Elijah. He used it to help people. He didn't use it for himself. So think about it. If you say a prayer to God and you say, God, I want you to fill me with an anointing and a power to heal people. It's not for you alone. It's to help people and to glorify the name of the Lord. So that's what Elisha, Elisha did with the gifts that God gave him. And that's something for us to always remember. When God gives you a gift, when God gives you the ability to work miracles, it's because he wants you to use it to help people, not for yourself. Any gift you have is to be used to help other people and for God's glory. Always remember that. And don't forget, the same miracles that Elisha performed, we can also perform such miracles in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. All right? Okay, so um, I want to say this, that, yeah, power anointing, power anointing, power to work miracles. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you won't be able to work those miracles. So the first thing you need to do if you haven't done this, okay, is to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. So together, if you haven't said that prayer, we're going to do it right now. I want you to put your hands together, close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe that his blood has washed away all of my sins. I thank you because I am now a new creation. Amen. So with that prayer now, the Lord Jesus lives in your heart and you are now a child of God. So you can now pray to God to give you the same power or even much more power and anointing that he gave to Elisha to walk miracles. You can say that prayer with faith and I know that God will answer it because he knows you use it to help people and glorify his name. Okay, so we go to today's memory verse. Today's memory verse is from Amos chapter 3 verses 1. I'll read it again or I'll say it again. Amos 3 verses 7. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. I'll read it again. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. You know, one very important thing I've learned from today's service is that whatever gift God gives me is to be used to help people. And that's what I want you to what to remember today and take it into this new week. Every gift, every anointing that God has given you, I want you to use it to help other people. Until then, continue to stay safe, continue to blossom. Bye-bye and God bless you.